Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today is the last day of April, it's April 30th, which also means it's the last day of Autism Awareness Month. To us who have family members or children like myself, my son, who's autistic, it is 24 seven every day of the year is Autism Awareness. But I'm happy that the world recognizes April as being Autism Awareness Month and April 2nd as World Autism Awareness Day, where it's a time to really reflect and focus on spreading autism awareness to our family, our friends, our neighbors, our community, our state, the world, to spread it as much as we can. And having social media has been a blessing in that sense that we have a bigger, more worldwide way to be able to spread that awareness um, through our Instagram, YouTube channel, Facebook, um, Snapchat, you name it. We have so many different platforms and we're so blessed to have that so we can spread the world to the world autism awareness. So I continue to ask you to please show your support even though Autism Awareness Month is over today. Um, please continue to show your support whether it's wearing blue and people asking you, why are you wearing blue today? Then it's a topic of conversation. Um, doing something to help an autistic family. If you have a member or friend going to their house and saying, hey, I'm here, what can I do? You know, how can I help you? How can I help your family? You know, just say it, I'll do it. That means the world to an autistic family like you wouldn't believe. Um, you know, or just, you know, donating, donating to our organization. Now, one thing I want to say about donating to our organization, make sure you look into the organization and that it has a good reputation that you can see where your money is really going to. Supposedly organization, um, the money goes to research, which we so desperately need. Um, but we also see some negative sides to certain um, foundations, organizations, and it's sad to have that, but with good, there's always some form of evil. So just, you know, if you're gonna go that route, we all are very thankful and it does, does help. We def definitely need research, more and more research. Um, and it's very appreciative, but just for your own sake, really look into it and see if that has a good reputation and you know you can, they can explain to you where your money is going to and you can see the effects of what you're, donating. Um, but if you have somebody personally that you know, I would also, you know, along with donating to an organization, I would also recommend that you personally donate to that family member or that friend because they can really use it. I mean, there's a lot of medical expenses. Um, their food intake is very specific, very delicate. Um, Sometimes that money could go used to eating, to buying specific food for the autistic child or person. Um, daily constant, sometimes long trips to see certain specialists. So the gas money, the bridge toll, things like that are expensive. Even co-payments, people still have co-payments. Some people don't have insurance at all, but have to do what they have to do for their children. So, I mean, I have OCD, so I see my mat is like cricket, sorry. Um, so yeah, so I would definitely, if you know someone, whether it's a family member, friend, to also, or especially to donate directly to that person, um, whether it's, you know, a special Christmas gift, their birthday, I mean, their birthday is their day. So um, make a gift basket, you know, with all their favorite goodies or things that can help them with autism awareness book or autism sensory books or autism sensory toys or just regular toys, whether it's color, crayons, coloring books, pencils, um, activity books, um, puzzles, games, you name it, everything like if you want to go back and see my video of what I put in the autism gift baskets when I do our march here um, every year on April 2nd, um, you can definitely get ideas of what I put in the baskets um, all the way from autism things to regular things that they would still love and enjoy. I mean, I can make a kid's baskets for $10 if you have the nearest 99 cent store, near Dollar Tree store. Please take advantage of these stores. They have wonderful, wonderful Quality, quality stuff. I mean, quality stuff. You think a dollar tree is cheap, they'll break in a second. Um, and maybe it will break, but 
just the joy of them receiving it and may, maybe because it means so much to them that they will take care of it. But Dollar Tree and 99 cent stores, they do have great, amazing, amazing stuff, great quality stuff. Um, this year we were um, blessed that, that Easter happened to come after the World Autism Awareness Day. I think the year before it didn't and the year before that it did because um, the date changes every year. So they come out with even more um, amazing stuff, more choices, more options. I mean, you could go crazy. I could make an autistic child's gift basket for $10. It's 10 um, items, but you can fill that basket up and it's some great stuff. So, um, and if you want to do an even bigger one or a more special one, or that you know that family member, that friend, their taste and what that child is into, or even if they're an adult autistic person, things that they might like, maybe they like to read, or maybe they just like to draw, you know. Um, just find out what they're into and what they like and their passion and make a gift basket around that. Sometimes it may be more. You can still get those things at Dollar Tree. You could get anything at Dollar Tree. But maybe you can spend $20 for that basket, $30, $50, even $100 if you wanted to really go out and galore, you know, to make that person feel very special, whether it's their birthday, Christmas, or just because, just because. So anyway, I ask you to please continue to support Autism Awareness, whether it's bring, wearing blue, bringing up the topic of conversation, um, you know, doing something special for a family or an of an autistic child or the autistic child themselves. I also do care baskets, which I do for the parents or the grandparents or whoever is raising and loving these angels. I do care baskets for them like I do an all coffee lovers gift basket. Everything like coffee cups, um, on the road coffee cups, all kind of coffee flavors, creamers. Everything that's about coffee. I have a movie night where I put in several different movies, like three different movies, and then I'll put like a gift card to actually go to the movies, or um, I'll put the candy that you actually get from the movie theater, popcorn, I'll put in popcorn there, can of um, Coke or Dr. Pepsi, the ones that you normally get at the movie theater. Um, all that stuff around in the movie theater. And then I'll do game night. So I put like three games in the gift basket and candy and popcorn and soda and all that stuff that you would normally do on a game board night. Um, I also do makeup gift baskets, um, spa night gift baskets. I'll do one with wine and cheeses and crackers for the couple to have like a relaxing night, some bubbles, um, some loofahs. Just, you could come up, I did an all car one, um, everything for the car from wipes to towels to products to clean your car. I did an all dog one in case they had a dog. Um, they could win that gift basket and have treats for their dog and dog bowls and stuff. I mean, the list goes on and on. So, um, Please, please continue to support Autism Awareness. Like I said, whether it's just talking about it, um, researching yourself, finding out all and any information you can, supporting someone with love and hugs, doing gift baskets, be, you know, maybe giving the mom or dad a little break while you take care of their son or daughter. Um, just so many things that you can do. And like I said, money is also very helpful. If you know somebody, um, family or friend, um, you know, personally give them the money because like I said, there's a lot of medical expenses, um, gas money for extens um, long trips to the doctor, co-payments. I mean, I could go on and on and on and I'll just start repeating myself. But um, yes, it does, does help. Um, also, um, what was I going to tell you? <laughs> kind of thrown off because I could hear the neighbor talking. Um, but anyway, um, let me give you an example of something that happened to me. I had a family member who I reached out to donate at least $10 of her gift cards basket. Mind you, this family member has a ton, a ton of money. They're well, they're well off. And at first they ignore me and I reached out again. And then they said, um, well, we'll be donating to an autism organization. I said, that's all fine and dandy and I tell you, I really appreciate that you're doing that. But you know someone personally. Your, your family member, um, I don't want to say the position that they are in. Maybe I will. Your nephew, I'm going to put it like that. Your nephew, you know him personally. You know he's a great kid. You met him. You, you got to engage with him. Why would you not donate 
ten dollars just to even a dollar just to say hey i love you i support you you know i'm here for you um you know you you've done so much for you know well i don't know that they've done so much they probably haven't done anything for anybody but i know that when it comes to their kids and grandkids they go all out and i think that that's great and that's how it should be um but you also have a nephew here that $10 could do a gift basket for another child. And he will feel the love and he will feel supported. He's autistic, not stupid. He knows when he's feeling true love, when someone really cares about him and autism um, and he expresses himself, he'll you know, keep quiet for a long time. Then all of a sudden he'll come out and say how he feels and what he, he realized is what, what's happening. And I said, I just cannot believe. I said, I have always been there in whatever way I can for your children. And I would be there in a heartbeat to this day. I said, because that's the way I am. I said, and $10, you can't give $1? And they said, well, we feel like if we donate to this organization, it does help. I said, that helps. You don't really know where your money is going to if you don't do the research into the organization. A lot of organizations are great and the research is amazing. I said, and I'm not saying don't do that. Do that too, but also remember that you know somebody personally and you can't give $10. I don't understand it. I Please help me to understand. And they said, um, well, we are. We're donating to this organization. It is helping Alexis. I'm like, it's really not directly helping Alexis. It helps for the research for autism awareness, which is great. Don't get me wrong. It's great. We need research. But because you know him personally, you can directly help him and know that your money is going to something that honors him. I don't understand. I'm going to ask you one more time. Help me to understand. And... um. I forgot what he said. I have it in text. Um, well, um, I, I think he just repeated himself as to this organization. I said, you know what? I'm going to leave it right here. All I, I don't understand what you're doing and why you would have, wouldn't have the heart to do a little something, a dollar, $10 for your nephew. I'll never, ever understand that when I've been there for your children and been loving and supportive. I don't understand. I don't, and I would still be there. In fact, I just donated to one of your children's um, funding things. And I did with my heart because your son was there for me and my son. So um, I said, but all I can do is let you go and wish you well. And that's it. I, I don't know the exact words because it's on my phone when texting. But see, this is the thing that I'm talking about. This is the sadness. If you know, if you don't know anybody, of course, but you want to support the cause of all means, look up an organization that you believe in, that you've looked into, and you know that things are real. Um, that's great because we need that. We need the research. We really need the funding. But if you personally know someone, family or friend, and they ask you, if you can donate because they're doing for other autistic children, they're doing something in the community or some event that honors autism awareness or other autistic children and their families, and at the same time it's honoring your son or your daughter, why would you not give $10? Everybody in this world can do $10 unless you're homeless. And... I mean, I just think you have to search your heart and your soul and you have to be able to live with yourself if you can't do it at least once. You, if you can't, you know, at least once a year. This, this march that we do is once a year. This was our 11th year. And for the first time last year was the first time I reached out to people because everything has been out of my pocket from my heart. I provide everything. I provide the food, the drinks, the desserts, the activities, the gift baskets, everything. I've did that for nine years. Last, actually, till this very year, because I continued to do the weight of it. The food, the drinks, the desserts, the activities, the photograph, the photo sessions, all of that is free. And that will always be free from my heart. I don't ask anybody to donate to that part. All I ask is people to donate for a gift basket. Just a gift basket. Just one, $10, I can make a child's gift basket. And it's just like this, I do this once a year, so I don't understand. I will never, 
ever understand. There's nothing that anyone can say or do that would justify that if you have a family or friend that you don't do something as far as just to be able to create a gift basket. I'm legit. I'm as real as it gets. I can prove with photos and videos and people that everything that I receive, whether it's an item or money, I have the receipts, I have the pictures of it to prove that that person received what you sent. So I don't understand. But that happened to me personally. That's why I say if you have a family or a friend, please, please open your heart. Be kind, open your heart, and do a special gift basket for that person. Or, like I said, go and give somebody a hug or um, be with them for the day or do whatever you can to show your love and support. Wear blue. So, you know, I've only asked people in the beginning, and like I said, last year was the first year I reached out personally to family and friends. Some people came through. It was great. Every little bit helps and everything is appreciated. This year, a little bit more came through. Only one family member, one family member came through as far as donating. One. For as far as supporting and coming to our march, only one family member has ever come in my family. One. And my family has money. It's not like I have a poor family or homeless family. My family, they're stable, they're well off, they're not rich of course, out of this world. They're not celebrities. They're not rich, but they have done good in their life. So there's no reason that none of them should not be able to give $10. Um, so now I lost my train of thought again. So I, I just, I don't know what to say. So every little bit helps. Like I said, gas money to go to doctors. They, these children and these people are adult um, autistic people have um, very a lot of food allergies. Their their food intake is specific. Um, it can be very expensive. Um, clothing, laundry, any little bit that if you have a family member friend, I don't ask my family and friends to do that. As far as food, bill money, laundry, nothing that I will always do that myself. But if I'm just giving you ideas on if you want to really open your heart and you know, if you want to financially open your heart, those are things that you can do. I don't know. I've never, ever, ever asked my family to do it. And I never will because if I can't even get a gift basket, Lord knows I ain't getting anything else. Um, so, um, yeah. So as far as one uh, family member supporting me, I've been doing this March for 11 years, not Nobody, and I have a big family, has come to my march, except one, and that's my nephew, Jeremy. He's been with us this whole time. He comes every year. He will take that day off. We we even make him a shirt when we order our shirts, because my daughter dresses us from head to toe blue, and she orders our shirts, and they're personalized shirts and stuff. We make sure we get him one to say thank you for making the sacrifice. He comes from three hours away. Um... And we want to always make him a shirt because we want to thank him, tell him we love you, we thank you, we appreciate you from the bottom of our heart for coming, to be there for your cousin, to be there for us. We can always count on you. You always have our back and we will always have yours. So, and he, for the last few years, he's won a, one of the caretakers gift basket. And I'm so happy because he deserved it. This year I did an all car one and he's into his car and he won that one. It was like very perfect. I was so happy. And last year he won a makeup gift basket and he had a girlfriend at the time and I think he gave it to her. And I thought that was the sweetest thing. So anyway, I want to move on. Like I said, please, please open your heart. Be kind. Continue to show your support in any which way you can, as much as you can, whether it's giving a, a hug, love, just a moral support. If you want to do it financially, that's great. If you want it, whatever way you can, hey, nothing is too small and everything is appreciated. But because this is the last day, I want to get into something that's been really heavy on my heart. And I try not to get into this subject because I've had some heavy disagreements about it. And it's 
so odd to me because how are you going to disagree with me? How are you going to fight with me when I have an autistic son? I know you're not talking to somebody who doesn't have an autistic son and doesn't know what they're talking about, doesn't know what it feels like, doesn't know what the journey is like, doesn't know, hasn't been through it. I've been through it for the last 23 years. My son is going to be 24. I've been through it. I've been from the beginning to the end. My daughter is here from college. How weird. She must be on a break. Um, so you can't argue and disagree with me. I mean, you can have your opinion and I can mine and we can agree to disagree, but you can't tell me you don't know what it's like. You've never been through this. You never experienced it. I have an autistic son. Hello? It doesn't work that way. You can even try to disagree with the doctors, even though the doctors have science and concrete proof to back what they're saying, but you, but you can kind of have that debate, but not with somebody who has an autistic child who's been through it. So, um, and I've been trying, because I've had those heavy disagreements, I thought, okay, I'm just going to let people have their opinion and believe what they want to believe. But it wouldn't be me if I'm out here doing a march for 11 years and doing so much for autism, for my son, for autism awareness, for other autistic children and their families. It wouldn't be right for me to just keep quiet just because I don't want to get into an argument. I mean, I have to speak my truth, I have to speak my peace, and I have to speak on what I know. Okay, so it just wouldn't be me if I didn't speak about it, knowing that I do a march for autism awareness, I do so many other things for autism awareness, having an autistic child myself, going through this journey. It wouldn't be me if I didn't speak at least my opinion or what I believe. And I've done this research. Believe me, you, we all want answers. We all want to know what causes autism. We all want to know if there will ever be a cure for autism. If early diagnose is the key so that this is not as much as it is. So I get it. I get it that we, we are desperately trying to find a cause and a cure. I mean, I don't focus as much as a cure because I feel like that is saying, um, I want my, my child to be the best that they can be, but not like I can't accept my child. I need a cure because I need a normal child. And that's what I feel. I feel it would be saying, I always said, if God said, um, I'll take your child back and give you a normal one, I would say absolutely not because I can't imagine, I can't even imagine my life without my son and and his special you know his special qualities and just the things that he says and does and at one time my son was nonverbal so there is hurt for those that have nonverbal children there is hope my child was nonverbal and he finally one day spoke um and i think the early diagnosis is key and you know when i started this march in 2009 2 years after i found out that the United Nations had declared April 2nd to be World Autism Awareness Day, it was one in every 150 children were diagnosed with autism. Like the next year too was one in every 110. And then it went to every one in every 88. And then it went to one in every 68. Right now, according to the CDC, we are one in every, every 59 children are diagnosed with autism, with, with the majority of them being boys. So it happens more in boys than in girls. That's a question that we need to ask even more so. What is it about boys that it's happening more in boys than in girls? There has to be something. And that's where this gene thing comes from. I really believe it. The doctors and scientists have done extensive, 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 in-depth research, especially within the last decade. And there is nothing concrete that proves that vaccinations cause autism. There is nothing, there's no concrete proof, not even a suggestion that, autism, that vaccinations causes autism. Now, if one day they come and absolutely have proof then I will support saying, okay, we don't need to take away vac vaccinations completely because we know that it does prevent us from having diseases. So I wouldn't say just wipe away with them because then the world, I'm telling you, will be wiped away. I think we would have to review vaccinations again and put our heads together from scientists to doctors to parents. Um, I keep feeling like cars are coming. 
to see what exactly is it in the vaccination that causes autism and can we delete it? Can we revise it so that this doesn't happen? But that's if one day they con have concrete proof that, okay, now we did find out that it does cause. But as of now, there is no proof, no concrete proof, not even suggestion that vaccinations cause autism. And I believe in your right to choose if you don't want your child to be vaccinated. You have that right, but you don't have the right to affect other children. So if you choose to not have your child vaccinated and you're willing to risk keep hearing cars. You're willing to risk your child becoming horribly ill or having a disease or dying, then that would be your choice. Or, or maybe nothing will happen by the grace of God that would be great. But you are risking. You are taking a chance. But what you don't have the right to do is to get other people sick. So if you choose to not have your child vaccinated, you need to homeschool your child. And I know we want to send our kids to regular school and have them have a normal life. But we're talking about diseases. We're talking about a health issue, a health risk. We cannot risk other people because, just because we believe, we want to believe so badly the vaccinations causes autism that we don't want to um, vaccinate our kids. That's fine. That's your choice as a parent and you run with the consequences and the risk. And by the grace of God, I hope it all works out. But you cannot risk other people and schools are public. So I think that those parents that do choose to have their children vaccinated and don't want their children to get diseases because you chose not, they also have the right to say, well, then don't bring them to a regular school. Don't mix them in with these children. Homeschool them. And a lot of people love homeschool. Homeschool is not a bad thing. It's really an amazing thing. I think it gives you more time with your children. I think it brings you close. I think it makes you more aware of what your children is actually learning and studying. So there's a great positive thing about homeschooling. I mean, I did it. I wanted to homeschool my last daughter because she had been bullied so much for years contemplated suicide four times, was jumped, and I begged her to, to let me homeschool her because I knew she would be safe, she would be happy, she would be comfortable, she wouldn't have to worry about this because I couldn't be with her 24-7. She knew if she needed me, I would come running and I was going to have her back and I was going to protect her in every way possible. But it just would have been easier and better for her to be at home. And she refused. She just refused because she said they're going to win even more so because they're taking my memories, my experiences. That's all I have left as far as school. Why let them win and take that from me? So she was willing to go through it, you know, not wanting to go through it, but she didn't want them to, they had already taken so much from her, her confidence, her, her, her faith, they'd taken so much from her. And only because she had us that loved her so much and we protected her and had her back and any way possible. It was just hard. And so I, and I'm glad she did do that at the end of the day because we just had to do more stuff. I had to make sure I dropped her off and picked her up to avoid her getting jumped um, and stuff like that. Oh, my nose is running. And, you know, stuff like that. But I was willing to do it, you know. And if I had children and I had to do it all over again, I would definitely homeschool my children because I'm that kind of a mother. I'm into subjects. I'm into activities. I'm into really going into detail. So I know I'd be a great homeschool teacher. I know. I would, It's just me. I love all that kind of stuff. Um, so anyway, um, that's what I want to say. Um, and I want to give some details because I was watching some videos this morning. And I think you should see a video. It's called... Well, there's one... Um, thing that I came up with was by Dr. Paul Wang. He's a pediatrician. He's a senior vice president for medical research. Um, some of the things that came from his um, research, one of the questions, are children born with autism or does it happen later? There was a research that was done extensively and in depth that was presented on Larry King Live and Oprah Winfrey show a few years ago. And it was saying that autism happens during the last months of pregnancy or during labor. The kids don't even get vaccinated at that time. So if it was vaccinations, how did it happen when they hadn't even been vaccinated yet? Now the signs 
of autism happens between the ages of two and four. That's why we think we had a normal child. It wasn't that they went to this, they were fine and then this, they got this injection, now they're different. It could just so happen to be that that one injection, or should I put it, that it just so happens that the time frame of being vaccinated is around the same time frame that the signs of autism show up. How about that? And um, so autism was always present. It just doesn't reveal itself to the to the ages between two and four, which is kind of around the time you're getting all the vaccinations. So we tend to think, well, the last thing they did was got vaccinated. It must be that. It must be that. But trust me, doctors and scientists have worked tirelessly for hours, days, years, months, weeks, decades doing the research and there's no concrete proof that autism causes vaccination. In fact, they're very clear. Autism does not cause, I mean, vaccinations does not cause autism because it had already developed. There's a disruption in the brain during the end of pregnancy and the beginning or uh, during labor just that the signs reveal itself between ages of two and four. So that's how we get it all mixed up. What must be the vaccinations. So Dr. Paul Wang says, autism can be reliably diagnosed until around two to four years of age, but some parents notice um, some symptoms even earlier. Like arthritis, the joints have been going down here for years or inflammation before you even realize that you have arthritis. Um, Dyslexia is another one. It's a reading ab ability. Symptoms aren't obvious until child starts to read. And then he was saying that he believed it was toxic exposures, exposures in the air, like when they're um, doing the vineyards or the pear sheds or things like that for the bugs. I mean, toxins. I mean, sometimes you can work with metals and stuff like that. Toxic exposures during pregnancy. Um, genetics. That's the main one that... The, all doctors and scientists conclude that they believe it's mostly in genetics. Like some families are susceptible to cancer. Some other families are susceptible to heart disease and stuff like that. Some families are susceptible to mental illness or mental disorder. I mean, it might be somebody you never even met yet. Um, somewhere in the generations. Um, like in my family, I don't, I have like, there's a couple of like cousins that I could kind of see autism there apparently but nothing real severe. But on my husband's side, he has an uncle that totally had the signs of autism. I mean, he was just like my son, except he was an older man and my son was a young child. Um, but I could see the same signs, the same reaction, same everything. But he was never diagnosed because back then he was 70 something when he passed away. They thought it was because the mother, his mother couldn't give him milk. So they had a, a neighbor, a friend that still had milk breastfeed him. And they thought that that's what caused him not to be able to speak or that he was disabled. But they never took him to a doctor. And back in those days, autism hasn't been really studied into the 1940s. And so he was born before that. So they stuck with that story and ran with it. He never was taken to specialists or anything. But as a mother of an autistic child, I saw the same signs. I saw the same reactions, same everything. So, it, and then there's maybe one other person in my husband's family. So, you know, I believe the genetic part way more than anything else. He also put, during pregnancy and complications associated with delivery can disrupt brain process before and shortly afterwards. Mutation is regenes associated with autism can affect how the brain develops and functions starting well before birth even though the actual symptoms of autism may not be apparent immediately after birth the underlying brain differences are accumulative this may likewise explain many causes of autistic regression so my husband is here i gotta stop and help him with something but i'm gonna come back and finish this video so he says, perhaps the initial disruption in brain development continued worsening or perhaps the com compensatory or compensation process couldn't keep up. This is through Autism Speaks. It was Dr. Paul Wang. Um, then I saw this video with Jenny McCarthy. Hold on. So I was watching um, Jenny McCarthy years ago on CNN and with Larry Keene as well. 
and she believed that vaccinations caused her son to be autistic. And she said the reason why, she said because years ago they were only given 10 shots versus today they're given 30 shots. Now, is 30 shots a lot? Yeah. I mean, I wish we didn't have to take no vaccinations, but that's not the reality of life. We need vaccination to protect us from diseases. Um, so that's something, yes, that we should question and that we should look into. Um, why so many? That's We're always going to have questions as parents of an autistic child or a family member with autism. We should always continue to ask questions. We should always continue to research. We should always continue to educate ourselves in autism. We should continue to spread the awareness. That is why, because we need to find out what causes autism. If anything, what causes it? So that it can be prevented and we don't even have to worry about a cure. But um, it says, she was saying the alternate schedule and the mercury and the there's ethernet and antifreeze and all this crazy stuff. But then I asked myself, okay, I was vaccinated as a child. I'm 53. I'm not autistic. Okay, granted, it was probably only 10 shots back then. And now there's 30. I have four children, not just one autistic child. I have four. So they're in the range where these 30 shots would be given. The first two children that I have had the same doctor. They got the same amount of vac vaccinations the same way. They're not autistic. My next two children, had, they too were born in the same city, had the same doctor, were vaccinated the same amount, the same way. Only one is autistic, which is my son. So if it was a vaccinations and they were born around this time where the 30 shots are happening, um, why isn't all my children autistic? Why just one? So see that, you're, you should be even asking yourself that. Always ask questions. I had a teacher that once said a question, not, a dumb question is a question not asked. So if you don't ask, you can't get answers. So I completely 100% support. Keep researching, keep investigating, keep asking questions, keep spreading the awareness. It's a must. It's a have to because we're in this journey. But I'm getting comments on my phone. Um, but I, I personally have four children. And like I said, the older two had the same doctor. One was born in 85, one was born in 1990. Same doctor, same vaccination, same amount, neither or autistic. My next two, they were born in the same city all in within a two year period. Same doctor, same amount, of, only one is autistic. So why isn't all, if it's vaccinations and they were vaccinated the same amount of vaccinations, same way, same doctor, why isn't all my children um, autistic? So that's proof itself that it isn't that every child that get vaccinated, especially with the MRI, like they said, is going to be autistic. And I come to this conclusion, and I was going to wait to the end to say this. I would rather an autistic child than a horribly ill dead child. That is what you should tell yourself. What's wrong with being autistic? Yes, it's a difficult journey. It's a hard journey. And trust me, oftentimes very, very sad. There's also blessings. Because, you know, one time my, child, my son said, he came in the kitchen, I was washing dishes. He said, God must have had his reasons. And I'm like, what did you say, Alexis? He said, God must have had his reasons. And I said, reasons for what? Why he made me autistic. He said, because I could be probably hanging with the wrong crowd, getting into trouble, getting into drugs. And he said, but yet I'm here. Because I'm autistic, I'm at home. I'm safe. I'm comfortable. I'm happy. I'm loved. I play with little kids' toys because I'm a kid. Even though he was like, you know, like in his early, late teens when he said this, you know, almost 20 maybe when he said this. And he said, and maybe I would have turned out to be a great kid because I have great parents who, you know, love us, protect us and show us, you know, the right way, you know, show us the right thing to do, good from bad. But there's a big possibility, you know, there's a chance that I could have been with the wrong crowd, doing the bad things, being out to, to like two, three o'clock in the morning. And he said, yet yeah, I'm here and I want to be here. 
And I just had tears in my eyes. I couldn't even answer him. And it's true. God has its reasons. You know, I'm not blaming it on God, but I'm saying God must have saw something in us that we were strong enough. Even though when I was told he was autistic, I didn't think, I thought I was a great mom, but I didn't think I would have the strength to really give this child through this difficult journey that I was about to embark on. Did I have the patience? I thought I was patient, but this was something far hard and difficult, and it was for the rest of his life. And so I had doubts in myself, even though I knew that the quality of person that I was was amazing and that I was a great mom, a loving mom, a protective mom. But I was younger, too. I was 28 when I had my son. And so you always have doubt. And then because you don't know, I had never heard of autism. I thought, what did I do wrong? Did I say the wrong thing? Did I hurt somebody verbally or physically to deserve this? Did I fall down and not remember? Did I not eat the right stuff? You know, is this karma for some? I don't ever think I hurt it anybody, but you start to doubt. You start to question. And what I didn't realize is it wasn't anything I said or did or that I didn't eat right or that I felt. It was that God must have saw something in me. Of course, there's that scientist genetic and something obviously physically causes it. But there's like, you know, I wasn't like, you did something wrong, so this is what you deserve. I was blessed with an angel that God entrusted me in my care because he knew I would learn to have more strength than ever before. I would learn to have more love than ever before. I would learn to have more patience than ever before. And that he would come to make our life special and that we would have the blessing of having him and that we would get through this, through our faith, through the help and grace of God, through us as a unity and a family. You know, and like I said, I don't have extended family support. When I say family, I'm talking about my husband, my children, nobody else, and that one nephew that's physically been there. Um, but majority is, you know, I'm not talking about brothers and sisters and cousins and aunts and all. No. And my mother passed away before Alexis was diagnosed. If she would have been here, I would have definitely had 110,000% support and love and understanding but so when i say family let me make it clear that i'm talking about my husband me and my children and we include that one nephew because you know i'm not saying that my family doesn't love me they might have their way of believing that they love me and may really love me but i think action speaks louder than words and i feel like if you can't do something simple as wearing blue to show your support, as to send me words and say, you know, I've had a brother and his wife, which I think two or three years wore blue and sent me the picture. And I'll forever remember that and be forever grateful. And then um, last year, I believe they sent some money, donated some money. And I appreciate that. Those are things I'll never forget, no matter what happens between us. But I would have loved the continued support, not money-wise, I mean, I would have loved for them to come, at least have come once to this march, to see the, the, how special and how emotional and how loving and everything that me and my family, husband and children, do for these autistic children and their families. And my work, my labor of love, to just show me at least once that support, to make the sacrifice. Make, the sacrifice of gas, the sacrifice of a long trip, which is only three hours. You know, sorry, I have neighbors coming in and out. Um, so just once to have, sit up straight, to just show me that love and support emotionally. To once just come, just do it. If, God, if I was dying, would you come? You know, and that's what I'm saying. I mean, I just don't understand, but, you know, to each his own. Um, so, because I would do it. That's what gets me is that I would do it because that's the kind of heart that I have. That's the love that I have for people that mean something to me. That's the way my mother was. It doesn't cost a dime to show some love and support. So <clears throat> there's no excuse. None, none. Anyway, getting back to what I was saying. So, yeah, so, you know, 
it's just, you know, and it's been a long journey. It's been a very difficult, a very painful, very sad journey. But it, we've also had blessings. And I went trade my son for the world. Um, so, yeah. So this is what she was saying. And she was saying her, first she said her son was healed. If your son is healed, then share what you did and make it free. Because you're a celebrity, you can afford it, but you should make sure that you fight for it to be free and to share it with the world. That's not something you hold in. So then she changed it to, he's recovered. You know, they say he doesn't qualify for some services. I'm like, I've been told that before. That doesn't not mean that my child isn't disabled. So she was like off the wall to me. She was so hung in this treatment. And I'm glad her son is doing well. I'm glad he's doing better. And I wish her, her son, and her family well. Trust me. But we don't agree when it comes to that. Um, the MRI is a vaccination that covers the measles, the months of rubella. rubella. Two to six million deaths per year before the immunization became. This has decreased to 122,000 deaths per year on... A 2000, um, as of 2012, mostly in low-income families. Get it. So this video is going to be long. I'm not even going to try to explain it or make an excuse for it. It's worth it. So I hope you bear with me. Maybe I'll have to do a part two. So then it continues to say, through vaccinations as of 2018, rates of measles in North and South America are very low. Vaccinations do not increase the risk of autism. The MRI vac vaccine is a mixture of live weakened or rise or of live weakened. I can't even see what I wrote. Of three diseases. MRI vaccination was developed by Maurice Hilleman. It was licensed for use by March by Merck in 1971. Um the doctors on the doctor show they were saying that this has been the biggest outbreak since 1996. I don't remember measles since before my time, and I was born in 1966. But I guess there was an outbreak in 1996 that I never remember hearing about, but the doctors have said it, and I believe them. Um, I think 130 cases. So <clears throat> the MRI is the biggest controversial vaccine because it says one in 1,000 kids will die from measles. I'm giving you some some information that I wrote. It's all over the place. Terrible, the some of the symptoms are terrible rash, fever, and cough. Um, so, yeah, so they were saying, you know, you as a parent have the right to choose to not have your child vaccinated if you feel that passionate about it. Um, but you should homeschool your children, and that's true. Other parents should not have to suffer for your decision, your choices. Their children should not be affected and that's what's happening there they're all breaks all over the place especially in the state of california la is going crazy up there with measles we never heard of such a thing since the measles vaccination came to play it just was you know it could still happen but i mean it was the, like the best discovery ever just like antibiotics penicillin oh my god that was like a cure breakthrough of uh, uh something that was discovered that you know, save so many lives. And I just, I agree with the homeschool. I mean, if I, as a mother of an autistic child, had believed um, that my child, the vaccinations caused my child to have autism and um, I don't want to vaccinate, I have that right. But I don't have the right to affect other people. And by sending them to a public school, that's exactly what I'm doing. And so... Um, yeah, so, I mean, it just has to be fair across the board. It's something you have to be, you know, think about. Um, so, and they were saying, have we traded something for something else? This is where it, the point that I was making. I'd rather have an autistic child than a horribly, horribly ill, because that's what measles, measles does and other diseases, horribly, horribly ill child or dead child, because that's eventually what will happen. Um, so, 
I'm hoping this is not somebody that's coming to visit us that's parking in the wrong side. Um, so what do you want? Okay, they're saying there's no concrete proof that vaccinations at all, after extensive different studies through the, de the last, especially the last decade, through decades, but especially the last decade. Um, hold on. Sorry, so many interruptions, neighbors, cars coming, parking. It's just like crazy. But uh, <clears throat> yes, so that was coming to my point about I'd rather have an autistic child because you don't die from autism. You don't die from autism. I mean, like I said, there's a lot of medical things. They suffer a lot from their teeth. They have a lot of medical issues. Some are more severe than others because autism is a, is a spectrum from mild to severe. A lot of children are nonverbal. Mothers dying to hear their son or daughter just say, I love you. It's tough. I get it. I'm there. I've been there. I'm doing this for 23 years. I've been through all of those um, crying and screaming and not being able to breathe and, you know, teeth pain and surgery after surgery and constantly going to UCSF and, you know, just the emotional pain, the social pain, your child being judged by other people thinking he's just a bad boy and you should spank him and you having to constantly speak up for your child and protect them and fight the world, fight society. Um, not having the support that you would love to have um, from family or friends or whatever. I mean, doctors visits like crazy, food allergies. They eat specific foods. Um, they they can't stand change. You know, you change. One time I changed my son's room around and I was so excited about him. New bedding, new curtains. We painted his room. We bought new toys, new everything. And he came off of the school bus and he about to had a heart attack. And we were filming, like trying to record his beautiful reaction. And I just cried because I thought autism is so very present. I, di I didn't get it. I didn't get it that even if he was getting older, he, they still don't like change. They don't, you have to, Verbally and physically prepare them for any change that you're going to do. To this day, my son is going to be 24, and I need to change his room around. I need to, his room is clean and organized, but he's got so much stuff that um, I want to, I just bought him not too long ago cubbies to keep a lot of his toys organized because he's into SpongeBob, into McDonald's toys, Burger King toys, Titanic, dinosaurs, um, movies he has a huge movie collection there's no more space for his movies and he has to have them in certain order so i'm looking into getting him um oh my god i think if i get one more interruption i'm gonna lose my marbles um but yeah so you don't die from autism and like i said i've been through it all the medical trips when he was first diagnosed with autism he was in the hospital for two years two to four times a month and it was like we had to sleep with him he would stop breathing and they wouldn't do anything and finally they said he you know I just got w w mad one day in the hospital I said that's enough they kept seeing croup and I was videotaping it because they were trying to make me seem like a hysterical mom and I'm like get out of here and so um I was like that's enough. I said, if you tell me croup one more time without really checking him out, I'm going to lose it. I want the head doctor and I want him now. I want tests to be done, blood tests, x-rays, whatever. Come to find out he had pneumonia and bronchitis and he was diagnosed with, uh, with asthma. So they finally got him on a breathing machine inhalers and then all those hospital emergency visits had stopped. Constantly UCSF having surgeries, having surgeries here, um, I mean, just the food, wanting to take off his clothes and be naked. And, you know, one time I woke up and the door was wide open and I'm running to the street thinking somebody kidnapped him. He went to the main street, got killed, and I, don't, I can't find him. I'm, my whole, whole world just came crying. All of a sudden, we look to the right. He's in the neighbor's car doing this to the steering wheel. And when I get out of there, get out of there, and I was so thankful that nothing, because he could have easily went... Right on the corner is the main street. The cars just fly by. He could have been kidnapped. He could have been killed. He could have been hurt. I mean, the worst could have happened. But that was part of the autism, him wanting just to run and be naked. And he moved the coffee table and crawled up. And then we had to buy a special latch 
that he can figure it out. I mean, we've been through it emotionally, verbally, mentally, physically. We've been there for 23 years. So please don't tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about. Please don't tell me I don't know what it's like. Like, what? You know, bye. You know, that... Please don't say either one of those that I don't know what it's like or that I don't know what to, I educated myself in autism, so I definitely know what I'm talking about. And I personally experienced it. So I think what the doctors say, we're trading off. Because parents believe that vaccinations cause autism and we don't want our child to be ill or we don't want our child to become autistic, we rather not vaccinate them and risk them at so many diseases that we had almost gotten rid of for so many years than have an autistic child and the stuff that they go through. Believe me, you'll go through more hell than you can even possibly know. So I would rather an autistic child than a horribly ill or dead child. And that's what we're trading off. Would you rather an autistic child and the things that they go through? Or would you rather a horribly ill and eventually dead child? Pick, take your choice because that's what we're trading off. And I'm glad that the doctors had mentioned that because I thought it was only me that felt that way, but no. So then I came across a video from a doctor named Wendy Chung. I believe she's a doctor or scientist. It was in March of 2014. She said, Aut autism is a spectrum of disorders. Um, at If you want to skip through and go to 2.54 the time, she clearly states and repeats it. Vaccines do not, do not cause autism. Um, she said the person that came up with that, she says, was a doctor who did a, a research and they found out, investigated, and found out that it was a ample, a complete fraudulent research completely fraudulent. He lost his medical license. He had his medical license taken away. So people, please do your research. Just don't, you know, it must be the vaccination and you stick with that story. You're going to stick by it and you're not even going to try to open your mind or your eyes to the research, to the studies, to the concrete proof, scientific evidence. You're just going to, he went to the doctor, got vaccinated within hours. He started going crazy. Okay, that's a problem, and that's a problem that needs to be addressed, and that's a problem that is so sad and hurtful. But please, you got to keep an open mind, and you got to say, okay, was there something there and I just didn't see it? And now it just so happens that he got a vaccination and made it worse? You know, one thing that she was saying that I'm just going to try to find here, she said that there's only one vaccination that people are complaining that they have said that have has an ingredient that causes autism and it's called bimerosol. It's an ingredient in 1992 that believed caused autism. Is one ingredient it's called bimerosol, an ingredient that in 1992 they believe caused autism. There that ingredient was immediately taken away and has never come back and now people are still complaining more than ever that vaccinations cause autism okay keep that in mind there she put there is no credible evidence that vaccination caused autism and it's all because of that one ingredient that was taken away a long time ago and has never come back um she said some of the things that they've come up with is associating with advanced paternal age, like the age of the father um, at the time of conception, which my husband only four years older than me, so he was 32. So that's not a big age at all. Still young to have children. Um, but it's also not in your early 20s, and of course the older you get, the more riskier things are. Exposure during pregnancy, like epilepsy medicine is one of them. It can be taken when you're pregnant and that can affect it. Genes are not the only cause, but can be readily found. One sibling with um, another sibling have autism. So one sibling has it doesn't mean the other sibling has it. Okay, here we go again. I have four children. Out of the four, one is autistic, my son. 
twins, the fraternals, they have 50% um, um, identical. They have 77%. Um, she was saying that some families are susceptible to certain diseases like cancer. Some families are susceptible to heart disease. There's some families who are susceptible to mental illness or mental disorder. In this case, it could be bipolar. It could be schizophrenic, which those are mental illnesses. Now, autism is not a mental illness. It's a mental disorder. Big difference. Um, so, and then she said not all... Um, I think she meant to say not all genes condition run in the family, gene condition run in the family. 20, she, they did a research with 2,600 children without any autism history. Um, 46, um, but they used 46 volumes. They went back to the encyclopedias, 25% single powerful genetic factors, 75% we haven't figured out. Two, Hundred to four hundred different genes were found. New um, early diagnosis still remains the number one key, um, and she recommended that you go to Interactive Network Solutions to be a part of a community that continues to do research and studies and support each other and all this stuff. So, you know, this year was the first year it was one in every fifty nine children are diagnosed with autism, which is an epidemic bigger than um, childhood cancer, juvenile diabetes, and pediatric AIDS combined. It's definitely an epidemic. They, you know, some doctors say the reason why there's more and more children diagnosed with autism is because these studies and there's research that doctors are being more educated. Um, research studies, all this are key and to, they're now able to diagnose kids earlier um with better testing so um like i said last year was one in every 68 and this year was one in every 59 and i can imagine next year too it's going to be worse than that so i just want us to be i mean i know it's hard i get it i'm there and i've been there for 23 years i get it it's hard it's difficult it's oftentimes so sad it's confusing it's just like you just can't we can't figure it out why we haven't figured it out but we haven't found the answer to cancer either and we've been searching for cancer for ages i mean there's been some development with cannabis and marijuana and you know i hate the living smell out of that crap i hate it and i think a lot of people use it as an excuse to get high when there's really m people that need it for medical reasons um and so there's you know controversial with that but i believe in it from i believe in medical marijuana i believe i have arthritis in my hands my knees and my hips and i've tried everything and you know, one time I had severe, severe pain in my knees. I thought I was going to lose my mind. And my husband had a marijuana alcohol rub that a friend made for him. We've never smoked marijuana. We don't sell, buy. We have nothing, absolutely nothing to do with it. We don't know much about it. But his friend had given him that and said, hey, if you ever have pain, just rub this on. And I was so desperate. I kept refusing, even with the pain. And I finally said, fine, just rub it on me. And I didn't have, with that one rub, I didn't have pain for a year and a half. Now the pains are coming back more so in my fingers, especially my right hand. This finger is getting stuck and killing me. These three fingers, but mainly this finger right here. So I need to find some cream. Or any ointment that they have because I refuse to eat anything with marijuana. I could take a pill, but I would not want to smoke it, smell it, or taste it against it. Totally against it. So if they don't have an ointment or cream, I'm screwed. But anyway, that's not the topic of this video. We're talking about autism. So I'm just saying, please, don't get stuck in a rut. Don't get stuck. If a doctor and scientist are doing extensive, in-depth study for decades, especially within the last decade, and they're telling you over and over again that they have, that there is no concrete proof that vaccinations causes autism. If we can't respect and listen to doctors, I mean, doctors aren't perfect. The only person is perfect and that we really can depend on is God. So maybe our faith, you know, I, me and my family have been going back to church for 
couple of years now. We've always gone off and on, but we decided that as a family, we needed to get back into spirituality. We needed to get back into our church. We need to get back into having our faith be a prime um, thing in our home, in our family unit. And it's been the best thing ever and not let anyone or anything, you know, one of the reasons why I had left the church years ago when my son was little, it was Palm Sunday and he was splitting the palms on the floor and he wanted, he always wanted to be on the floor. They like the feeling of stuff. They have this thing for feeling. And this old man turned around and said, shut up. And I'm like, absolutely not. I'm like, you cannot tell my son to shut up because you are not the parent. If you have a problem with my children, you need to address me as the parent. I said, but for your information, did you know that my son was autistic? And his eyes got big and I just walked out because I felt like if in church I couldn't find compassion and understanding and patient, where the hell was I going to find it? And my husband's like, do we have a carry son on our back? Leave my child alone. He's autistic. It was one of the rough times through the autism journey. And I allowed that man to take me away from my faith, from my God, from my strength, even though I continued to believe in God and I would pray and, you know, read my Bible every now and then, but I was away from it. And you can't be blessed. You can't be protected. You can't have strength and peace through hard and sad times if you don't have God in your life or if you don't, you know, have that spirituality that gives you strength and peace and keeps you going and keeps you unified and allows you to see all the positive and all the good. So I believe that is an important thing is for you to get draw closer to God, get your faith in check, whatever that faith may be. It doesn't have to be mine. I'm Catholic. It doesn't have to be mine. But whatever brings you strength and peace and faith back so that you can endure or you can, you know, go through this difficult journey of autism and, you know, let God, you know, show you the light and the answers and just pray that soon, one day, very, very soon, we will have at least a cause. What concrete proven cause of autism and where we go from there. And then, you know, you have to develop a relationship. There's been some doctors that, like when I first was explaining my son's symptoms, this doctor pulled, put me off for two years. He kept saying I was a hysterical mother. He kept saying some kids are slower than others. You need to just relax. And he was put, and it wasn't until I saw a doctor for my daughter that she happened to ask me, how are your other children? And I mentioned my concerns that I had for the last two years. That's when she did a referral to the special ed teacher and that special ed teacher started all the testing, had my son diagnosed with autism. She sent him to autism specialists. Uh, and I hate this word, retarded. I don't think it should ever be used. I think it's a degrading, just like the N word is. Um, it's meant, it's used in joking as someone who's stupid. You know, it's not used in the right medical term. But there was a retardation specialist that also... A, um, diagnosis with some mental retardation um, at that time. And um, so, yeah, um, she's the one that went gung-ho on getting all the specialists involved, therapy specialists, physical therapy, every specialist you can think of, all the testing done. And she's the one that came to my home and delivered the news that my son was autistic. I had never heard of the word, never knew anybody with autism. So, of course, I had those doubts, those questions. What did I say? What did I do wrong? You know, did I not eat good enough? Did I not, did I hurt somebody and didn't know, you know? And then when I, she connected me to a center that we have here, which is a regional center who um, does your, you have an intake worker that comes to the house and, and takes your, your family situation and your child's testing and stuff. And then from there, they accompany you to every doctor visit if you like. They defend you in every, any school problems that the principals or teachers are judging your son or daughter, or there's problems with their being unfair. They will defend you and protect you in the school um, aspect of life. They're just there. They have been angels since the day my son was diagnosed to this very present day. And so I can't be thankful to God enough and thankful to them enough for, for everything they have done for my son and for our family on this autism journey. So, you know, it, it, I know I get it. I'm there. I've been there through everything, through the medical stuff, through the 
emotional stuff, the mental stuff, the physical um, suffering, the unanswered questions, the constant looking into the researches that are being done, the studies, um, you know, just not having a cause and a cure. It's just like, what is going on with all the technology and all the stuff? But, you know, I see that we've been trying to figure out cancer for ages and ages, and we haven't really found the concrete answer to curing cancer. So we just have to believe that hopefully one day in my lifetime, I will see um, the answer to a cause and a cure if a family met, if the family wants that, um, or better yet, prevention. What causes it so that it can be prevented? Um, but I love my son, and I wouldn't trade him for the world. And um, he's the best thing. I have videos on him, on the autism brain, how, things that he talks about. He, he has that genius side where he knows numbers, statistics, facts. Um, he can tell you all about the Empire State Building, the day it was built, how many men it took to build it, anybody die from it, the weather, um, how many feet. He can tell you, my husband's own town, how many, how many square feet it is. In 18 this person, and 19 this person, and 17 something this, I mean, he knows geography, math, science, like nobody's business. Um, just a genius. But yet, he's a 23-year-old playing with little kids' toys. He's into SpongeBob, Titanic dinosaurs, New York, his dream is to see the Empire State Building and um, the Statue of Liberty, which is something we've been working on. And there's reasons why it's taking long. Um, you know, but he was nonverbal and now he talks. And you can, of course, see through his conversations that autism is very present. Um, so that's why I continue to do this march every year to spread the awareness, not only to family and friends and neighbors, but to the community, to our state, to the world. We've been featured in the New York Museum. We've been featured on Internet TV, several English and Spanish publications. Um, people from another state came to meet me, to know my story, and to thank me for doing this. I mean, like I said, I provide everything from my heart free of charge. Um, and the gift baskets, I still carry the weight of them. And some of them are done by donations, which just started the last two years. Um, so, and it's some, it's my labor of love, something that, that I will do to the day I die. And my children will carry on my legacy. So, um, if you want to go back and see videos of previous years of what our march is about, you know, autism looks, anything that, you know, we found out with autism, um, you can more than welcome to go back. Um, some of the fe featured things are autism has four colors, red, yellow, dark blue, and like a royal medium blue. The main theme color being blue because it happens more in boys and it's in girls. It's also a calming color effect. The puzzle piece is the mystery because we don't have a cause and a cure. Um, and the colors represent the complexity. I mean, it does discriminate, um, culture, age, race, nothing. So um, I just want to wish all of you families that do have families with autism in it, I wish you well. I wish you many, many blessings. I wish you, um, I just pray that you continue to have hope and faith and never to lose that no matter how long it takes us, even if we don't see it in our lifetime, but hope that when we're gone, somebody will figure it out. Um, and just be kind and understanding and patient with somebody who's autistic and their families. And like I said, um, this is a difficult journey. It's a sad journey. It's, it's really tough and it's forever. So, um, we need all the love and support we can get. And if that's just, in my case, my fam, my, um, husband and my children and some fam and some friends who have come through for the march and stuff like that, and who always are saying kind things, uh, words of support, you know, then that's what it takes. But um, this video has way gone over an hour. I know it, I know it. I hope you understand. Um, this is our, I just wanna show you, this is our flyer for our march. It shows our group picture, which is huge. Um, and it shows different pictures from, the flyer, we always do pictures from the previous year. So it shows a family here when we did the photo session. It shows people marching with us here. And it shows me leading the march. And it's every April 2nd, which is World Autism Awareness Day. 
it, there's walks and events all over the world on that day. So find one that's um, near you and please do it. I mean, I'm the only one that provides everything for free, but a lot of people, they would charge you for water bottles and stuff. But hey, just being a part of it, you're still doing something. And that money also goes to research. Um, so yeah, and then it shows my family here. And it shows what we do. Like I'm the creator and founder on this particular flyer it cut off our titles but i'm the creator and founder of the march my husband is a set designer so he sets up the plaza builds anything that we need built this is my son alexis who is autistic this is my daughter adriana who is in charge of all photos and videos and all social media she also does the flyers all that good stuff and the photos at the um anything that has to do with photos and videos of our journey and photos at the march um, and videos and she's in charge of all social media. This is my youngest daughter, Carolina. She's in charge of all artistic stuff, any posters that we need done. She dresses us from head to toe blue, what we're gonna do in our hair, um, put in our hair, what we're gonna, what blue makeup do we use, what shirts are we ordering this year that are personalized, what pants, what shoes, um, anything that's artistic she does. And she also does the desserts um, for me because she's all artistic. So that's us and what we do. We do them, this one's in Spanish. But we also have them in English. This one right here is in English. This is the English one. So we reach out to Spanish and English people, of course, because we're, well, I'm Puerto Rican. Um, my husband's Mexican, so my kids are half Mexican and Puerto Rican. So we're definitely bilingual. Um, but yeah, so you, you know, all of you are in my prayers. And like I said, I get it. I'm there, I've been there, and I will continue to go through this journey. And I get it. And we should continue to have questions. We should continue to look and study and check out every research and study that is done. We should talk to our doctors. We should develop a, a if you don't have a doctor that's supportive or understanding, let them go. Get one that does, one that's into these research and studies, ones that support you, one that can really, really cares about you and your family and have your best interests at heart. Get that type of doctor and develop a close, wonderful relationship with them so that you can always be in constant communication and support and help each other. And what better than to have someone who's in the journey and someone who's scientifically also there to have the best of both worlds. Um, continue to pray. Pray, we need prayers. This world is going through something crazy, ugly, nasty, um, and we need as much prayers and as faith and as hope and positivity as we can possibly have. Don't ever let no one take that away from you or nothing take it away from you. Always keep that at the forefront of your life, of your family, um, of anything you're going through. Um, so yeah, so my recommendation is, like I said, get a great doctor that understands, cares, support, has your best interests, you and your family's best interests at heart, develop a great close relationship, a long lasting relationship. But first of all, have God in your life, um, whatever that means to you. Um, keep a strong faith, go to church or do anything spirituality, listen to spiritual music um, that's uplifting, um, read your Bible or anything that you consider spirituality, keep it the faith, keep the strength, keep the positivity, keep the peace. Um, and just, you know, and surround your people, surround yourself with people that will love you and support you emotionally, especially number one. And if they can support you in other ways, that's great, you know, but you know, I get it. That's the best thing I can say because I'm there. I've been there and I will continue to be there. So you, all of you, anybody that's autistic in their families, you're all in my prayers even though I don't know you, I don't know your names, um, but I pray for all of you as I hope you keep me and my family in your prayers and, you know, may God be with you and I wish you well. I wish you the best and yes, keep having questions, keep having, um, you know, keep investigating, keep, you know, looking into these research and studies, keep an ear open, an eye open, you know, be your biggest advocate, be your child's biggest advocate, protect them, fight for them, fight for their rights, make sure they're happy, they're safe, they're comfortable, and that they live the best, 
sweet life that they can live. And even if you're going through so much physically, mentally, emotionally, just keep running. Keep running and don't look back. And just one day, we're going to have the answer, a concrete proven answer. And, you know, even if it's not in our lifetime, but our children will see it. And, you know, just also another thing I suggest is, please, if anything should happen to you, have a plan ready. You know, who's gonna, who's my child going to live with, whether they're an adult or a child, who I know will love my child, you know, pretty close to me, because um, no one will love your child like you. Um, but I know my children and my husband will carry on my legacy. They'll also take and protect my, take so good care of my child like I would. They will do the things that I did. Um, they will make him happy, safe, and comfortable. And, you know, they will carry on. So make sure you have somebody that in case something happens to you that can continue to love and support your child, even if, an, if it's an adult autistic person, that will continue to fight your fight, that will make sure they're safe and comfortable and happy and will continue to do the things that you would have done for them. And just make sure that you have that plan that if you, you go, you go in peace. That's a huge thing to have ready, huge. In my case, it will be my children and my husband. Me and my husband both go to be my children. We already have a plan. Where is he going to live? What they're going to do? What is he going to get? What are they going to say? I mean, we have a complete, complete plan. So that's another thing I want to advise that you do. But when it comes to this vaccination, everybody is entitled to their own opinion, their own belief. I just say continue to have an open mind no matter what you believe or what you think or your opinion. Don't get blinded by just one thing, you know. And if you choose that your child should not be vaccinated, which I advise you to vaccinate your children, you know, like I said, and I can't say it more clearly and more loudly, I'd rather have an autistic child than a horribly ill and dead child. So that's the best and the biggest thing I could say. But if you choose, that is your right. That is your child. When you make that choice, that decision, you are also taking accountability for any consequences, any risk, anything that happens, you're going to take responsibility because that's what you believe in so bad that that's what you want to do. And you have that right. You're the parent, they're your children. But please don't affect other children. If that's the choice that you make, make sure that you have a homeschool plan so that they can be safe from other people too. You know, it works for everybody. It's a fair thing all across the board. So make sure you have a plan for homeschool because these other parents, they do want to vaccinate their children and they don't want nothing, you know, to happen to them. And it's happening. We're having all these huge outbreaks all over the place. We just had quite a few in LA and it's getting out of hand. It's out of hand, people. Snap out of it. You know, just weigh, weigh the consequences, weigh the choices, you know, search your heart, search, pray about it. Pray about it, you know, do your research, do your homework. Above all, keep an open mind. Because, I mean, you have to, you can't close yourself off. And you can't affect any other siblings that you have for any other of your children. You can't affect other people's children. We have to protect and take care of our own, but we ha also have to be mindful of other people, and that's all I ask. That is my opinion, my belief. That is what I've researched. That's what I've investigated. I know what I'm talking about. Like I said, I'm there, been there, and will always continue to be there. So, you know, and I will continue to ask questions. I will continue to you know, look into these studies and researches and I will do my own investigation. I will continue to educate myself on autism and I will continue to spread the awareness and share my journey and, you know, and make sure I continue my labor of love because I have a son that I love that's autistic very much and his name is Alexis. So into my next video, I hope that this has somehow inspired you or helped you, even if it makes you angry. Um, I'm going to try to disable the comments just because I don't want to get in combative thing. You know, I don't have time for that. I don't, don't waste your time. Don't waste my time. If you want to continue to believe that vaccinations cause autism and you don't want your child to be vaccinated, that is your right. That is your right. But I don't believe it. Because I've done the research, I've done the homework, I've investigated, I've followed all the studies, 
you know, and because number one, I personally have a child with autism and I have other children. So it's not like I only have one child, so I have no, nothing, no one else or nothing else to compare it to. No, I have three more children. So I'm living proof. I have proof in the pudding with my four children that all have been vaccinated, same doctor, same way, same everything. I was vaccinated that way. Sure, there's more vaccinations now, but my children have had all those many vaccinations. None of us are autistic but my son. So maybe the question is, why does it happen more in boys than in girls? Is there a gene factor there that's also causing that? That's one big question to ask. And like I said, keep asking questions. Keep investigating. Keep doing your research. Keep doing your homework. Keep up to date on all the studies and investigations and researches. And listen, have an open ear and open eye and open mind. You know, you have to. It, it, it's your, your responsibility as a parent to not only love and take care of these angels, but to be their biggest advocate and to protect them and fight for them. And, you know, and to only, the only way to completely do that is to be well-rounded and not be stuck in one situation. So I will continue looking out for vaccines just because right now I know there's no concrete proof proof and I've investigated and researched and been up to date on all these different studies and I'm proof because I have children I'm I know I'm there I do have an autistic child so I know um so it's not like you can say you don't know what you're talking about you ha you're you haven't gone through this absolutely wrong um so but I will still keep that in a corner and say, okay, I will always continue to look at that, continue to be updated on vaccination studies and research, just keeping an eye in that corner. You know, if anything different or new develops, I'm gonna be right there to hear and see. So you just have to be well-rounded and like I said, open mind, open ear, open eye, in order to completely be the biggest advocate for your child and to protect them and to give them every possibility of awareness um, of protection possible. So be blessed. Like I said, sh be kind. Show your support in any way you can. Today is the last day of autism awareness for us who have autistic children or family members. It's 24-7 every day of the year. So continue to pray for us. Continue to wish us well. Continue to show your love and support. That means the world to us. So please like this video. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already. Please push that notification bell because it's the only way you get hits up on all the videos that I do. Um, and um, if you have, if I don't get to disable the comments, please, it has to be constructive criticism or just, you know, positive and respectful. Anything other than that, I will, and don't try to convince me. I mean, I'm just giving you stuff from my personal experience, which is the best thing you can ask for, somebody who's been through it personally and for as long as I have, 23 years. So I've been through the birth, the childhood, the teenage year, and the manhood. So I've been through all these levels because there's so many different levels that you'll go through. So I get it. So And I have the personal experience, which is the best thing I could ever give you. So for my personal experience and me educating myself and investigating and being up to date and really paying attention to these researches and seeing for myself that there is no concrete proof, all this stuff that is, you know, my belief. And like I said, you have a right to not vaccinate your child. I'm not saying you don't have a right. You absolutely have a right to that choice. But I'm just saying, if you make that choice because you believe so badly that that's it, even if the studies say different and the proofs say different, that's your choice. And you should do what your heart tells you. Always follow your heart. Even though the heart can be deceiving sometimes too, that's what the Bible tells us. But you know, follow your instincts if you don't want to say heart. Your motherly instincts, follow those. And then do what you have to do for your children. That is your right. That is your choice. But just be mindful of other people who also have a right and a choice. So, okay. I'm going to finally cut it because this is way beyond an hour. Um, continue to be blessed. Blessings. And I love you all. And I wish you all well.
So my baby boy got a new haircut before he went to the dental appointment. So let's show him. That's from the front, the side, the back. So it's kind of like a flat top slash crew cut. I did it, of course, on the hairstylist. We normally leave the whole head this side. He likes it really short so it lasts long and it doesn't itch because he gets really itchy because his hair is really thick. But we want it to leave this part a little bit longer and this section even a little bit longer than that. So it's kind of like... Huh. You like it? Yeah. Feels good, huh? Yeah. To have a fresh, clean haircut. And then he'll be set. For, he likes to have a nice, clean haircut for church on Sundays. And then he likes to go to his appointments. Yeah, nice have a good haircut, haircut for the next three months. Yeah. So and you think that, it'll last three months? Yeah, yeah, and after that, it comes back. Oh. It takes three months to grow back. So when he was little, he didn't used to like getting his hair cut. But... And I kind of wish I would have left his hair just normal, long, and just put in a ponytail. But he does have his tail since he was little. Stand up. Turn around so they can see how long your tail is. That's his tail. So he still has a tail, but then he likes his hair on top nice and short. But we gave him a style, which is normally a complete, like I say, crew cut this side all over, but we gave him a little style. My husband wanted him to try this, and at first he was like, no, I don't like it. And then he finally said, take it a little bit shorter, and we did, and now he likes it, right? Now you're going to eat your Jack in the Box? I'm sorry. Yep, and see he's watching his SpongeBob. All right.